Why I would never abandon the Philippines? The first thing I want to say is, this is the obvious. My wife comes from there. My in-laws are there. My kid, my uh, two of my kids were born there. Um, but the other side of this being is, I never really had any roots anywhere. Um, living in the UK, I would say, is literally that living in it. It's not being part of it. It's not integrating in the same way. I don't feel part of being British or anything because I spent most of my life up till I was 16 overseas. Um, but also I found the UK an unfriendly place. And it's not that I'm, oh, I, I feel like I'm victimized here or something. It's just not the same as Spain, for example. You know, everyone's really friendly here. Um, Germany, really friendly people. Um, but the UK just seems to be like constantly with its hands out. Um, prime example, sports facilities and all the sports fields all sold off. The, the, used to, the kids used to go to for free. What, what's all that about? Selling everything off as a private enterprise. I have to say, in Spain you do pay for some stuff, but at the same time, not at the same level as the UK. Plus, like, have got nature parks for miles. I've got uh, the beach. I've got um, every town's got massive parks and stuff for kids and everywhere you go it doesn't matter if it's Barcelona it doesn't matter if it's uh, Mercia um, Madrid what there is child spaces the UK seems to be I don't know I don't know it's, it's frustrating me um, because it's bad when you cannot connect with your own country anymore or well England's not my own country anyway. We were originally Scottish-born, um, but I spent less time in Scotland than anywhere else on the planet. So I can't really say too much on that either. Um, also, the drug problems in the UK are horrendous. But I think the biggest problem for me in the UK is it lies to itself. The local media, local newspapers do not talk about the drug problems in towns and stuff. Though, I mean, Worcester Evening News, for example, it talks about a swan getting run over. Um, not the high levels of heroin addiction in the, the town. Because if you, if you have these problems and you actually openly say we have a problem, then you have to look at fixing it. The Philippines knows it has problems. The Philippines is aware of all its problems. It's right in front of it. And in the newspapers, you get some really funny stories, um, which are quite brutal, but they, I find them amusing in the fact that they do seem surreal sometimes. Somebody being kidnapped. Um, there was a, a tire. This guy brought his car in to have a tire changed. They didn't have the tyre, come back tomorrow. No, they did have the tyre. There was something else they needed for doing the tyre change. So the guy basically left a tyre there overnight. Um, it might have been an inner tube or something, I don't know. Um, but come back, the tyre had been stolen overnight. It, long story short, the guy who had the car wanted the tyre back because it was quite an expensive tyre, ends up kidnapping the guy from the store and taking them away to beat him up. Those sort of things happen in the Philippines and they're quite amusing um, for all the wrong reasons because it shouldn't be funny, but the, it's just the fact that these things happen. It's, you know, if you were doing some Hollywood movies, there's 101 storylines you'd find in a couple of months in the Philippines because there's so much stuff going on. But for me, the Philippines is just take it or leave it. It's there. It's not sitting there lying to you. You know, it's a bit like the UK council tax. And everything. oh, we've got to cut back on services. You know, we've got no money. They've got no money because they spend it all on pensions. That's where all your council tax goes. It goes on nothing else. Virtually none of it goes on the services. It all goes on pensions. It's a bit like the police, you know, faffing around in brand new BMWs and over 50 grand a year plus all the other bits and pieces that go with them and early retirement mention that one as well so then they transfer to another force as a consultant so they get paid twice um, it's just dirty corruption Philippines has corruption but they they just accept it 
you know, they know they're corrupt. They don't sit there and act as if they're not. That's that's the difference between the UK and the Philippines. The UK lies to itself all day long, and I I just can't be bothered with it. I'll be honest with you, I just can't be bothered with it. The housing prices, people go, oh, the housing market's going up. I mean, I was reading the other day, it's gone up another thousand pounds a month up until the, you know into next year. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You know, I do not understand why, why nobody sits there and goes, well, why does this make any sense? Because a prime example of this was somebody was doing a... It, this was on LinkedIn, actually. The guy was on about he bought his first house for, I think it was £2,000. And his first salary then was something like 500 a month or something. Um the house, he still has the same house, but he says now that house is worth something like £600,000. And the salary for somebody coming into the same industry at the level he was when he began is only being paid 22000 That is the state of the UK. There's a big divide. And it's a false, it's a false roof as well. It's just, you know, I'm just saying, well, eventually it's going to, that bubble will go and it will go quite bad. Spain, you know, it's got its problems, but at the same time, even Spain, I like, you know, it, it, I think it was somebody got slapped in it, slapped yesterday or today. I'm not sure it was a, it was somebody important anyway because it was on the news. <laughs> but Spain, I like the way the people are. People are pretty friendly, and although it's still quite a socialist com country I have no issue with that you know I like artisan bakers I like knowing there's all these little small shops not everywhere because that's what makes things interesting when you go to a big mall and it doesn't matter which mall you go to the Philippines are a prime example of this um, you go to the SM mall and all the same stores are in every SM mall and they're selling the same stuff blah 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 it takes all the fun out of it. Now uh, I can understand with things like uh, Apple and uh, other uh, Samsung, whatever they're providing globally um, certain devices that wouldn't be available to a small artisan. But at the same time, a lot of supermarkets took all the bread makers, the butchers, the small greengrocers, etc., and destroyed them. Um, in the Philippines, they still exist, the smaller stuff. Spain, they exist. The markets exist in Spain. The UK, Worcester, and the I think the nearest one was Kidderminster. I'm not sure the Kidderminster one is surviving still. They've been destroyed by the councils. And I can only assume it's to do with the big supermarkets and up to dirty tricks as such. Um, so the UK doesn't really have anything to offer me um work wise obviously i can hop back and forwards but beyond work there's only see my family see my daughter etc um beyond that not a lot else so my roots are mainly in the philippines because although i say there's a lot of negative stuff it's just stuff to be aware of I'm not saying that's the be end and end all. It's sort of like there's no point me selling you the holiday brochure version um, because you can get that on any channel. Um, you already know that stuff. I don't need to tell you that. What I need to tell you is to be aware of taxi drivers trying to spike the price um, and other bits and pieces like that. But generally, the Philippines... It's a nice place. It's a lot. There's a lot of dust and smog there. I mean, there's no way of getting away from that unless you head away from the cities. But if you went more provincial, you start losing the medical cover and stuff. So where we sit, Minglanilia sort of sits just south of the city, and just before you start heading into um, a bit more rural areas, which suits us. Um, but yeah. Philippines still home will always be um, we've spent enough money there 
Yeah, it's it's still home. We got, I mean, we got properties out there, and the call center stuff's still there. And like the same with the call center. If you, I mean, if you're serious about doing call center stuff, get in touch. If you, all I need is clients. I'm not, you know, you can have a concept or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's clients. That's the only bit we need. The rest of it, I've got it or can get it. It's as simple as that. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah.